J and J Power Hour. It's going to be an interesting um, episode today. Probably not a very funny ha ha episode from us. Um, I don't know. Maybe it w- who knows where it will spiral into? Because even with a topic, we could still end up talking about anything. We just talk for about half an hour about every about so much shit. So. <laughs> Yeah. Who knows with us where this is going to go, but um, I'll just put a, a little disclaimer out at the start of this episode, just so everyone's aware. There might be some topics that are a little bit uncomfortable for some people or some triggers. We're going to be talking about sexuality, mental health, um, just in that kind of vein. Um, you've probably seen the title of this episode. You see me post something on Twitter about this a little earlier in the week, just to kind of give you a heads up on what's coming up today. Um, but We'll talk about that in just a second. First and foremost, JPJ, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are, uh, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing I'm good. good. I've I'm had good. <laughs> I yeah. I mean, I cannot complain. I mean, I had a horrendous time this past Saturday. I traveled to watch my American football team get absolutely destroyed in the playoffs in mm. zero degree weather. Oh, so. Oh, other than that, other than that, so you're cold and depressed, cold. basically. <laughs> yeah, cold, <laughs> cold. More than anything, it was cold. Mm. Uh, but other than that, I'm doing good, man. Big things on the horizon. Feeling optimistic about what's coming up down here. I'm excited That's for right. next week, Royal Rumble chat. Yeah, I'm for we're, that. we're ready for that show. Uh, by the way, guys, we are oh, yeah. we are gearing up. Yes. We're going to be talking. We'll do Rumble predictions. We're going to do. It's just going to mm-hmm. be literally the word a, Royal Rumble and just anything Royal relating Rumble to that. Extravaganza. That's what we'll call it. Great, great marketing there. Marketing genius, yeah. JPJ. That could be your like yep. your uh, nickname or something. You could put it in little quotations. Yeah. Marketing, marketing the marketing jesus oh look at that i that's like that bad. oh that's i don't bad. the marketing g you could be j j p j jesus j p j m j j p j jeez that's that's yeah. a tongue tire and then if i got big enough you know i could start off as the marketing genius and then if i was a heel and really wanted to really wanted to mess with people i could become the marketing jesus mm, there you go see j p j or you just call you people. if you're the heel you could just call yourself the j p j because you know how sometimes yeah, they call that's the, true. it's like the Brian I, I like I would actually, I'd be mm. like, yeah, no, I am the JPJ. Because there's no one else. It's, you're not a JPJ. No. You're the JPJ. Correct. I mean, I'll take okay. my royalties anyway. when you when you turn. <laughs> I want my royalties check in the mail. Like, okay. like pro wrestling tees. Send it to me in the mail. <laughs> yeah, eight months after. Uh, eight months after. Yikes. It was due. But yeah, a casual reminder a to check out uh, what a what a maneuver. <laughs> They're great. They have a lot yes. of people. They have my shirt. They have a between two beards shirt. They have love wrestling shirts. They have CFG stream shirts. Mm-hmm. They have shirts for fucking everybody. The water maneuver shirts themselves. If you go to water maneuver and go to their actual store, they have some fucking dope shirts. They've got a shirt that I've got coming that is a, a twenty one pilots cover art of the of the uh, album blurry face but it says baby face and it's fucking awesome ah, yeah. yeah that's a great shirt yeah that's and a they, clever have all di- idea. They, they have all different kinds of things and like you can get customs done where it's like um you know like the run dmc shirts like with the red i got a run yes. dmd i got dmd because i was like oh it's a custom shirt and, it, and it's dr Britt baker um so yeah it's um they're cool go to water maneuver they're just great. I they're in my in my links in the description in my link tree. You can go to my water maneuver thing, but you can see the whole catalog of 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 stuff on the uh, left of the screen on uh, that website to go and get all your water maneuver stuff because they're great. They're fast. They're relatively cheap. To be completely honest, it's a pretty good price point um, for what you're getting. Um, so I would, I can't, I'm not just saying that cause my shirts are on there, whether my shirts are on there or not, they're just a good time. And they've got a great social media, uh, presence. Mm. They're, they're very good at they social do. media. They get it, which is something that's, uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is just very millennial of me, but it's very appealing when a company or brand is good at social media. Their social I media would agree. Game, yeah. The social I think, media uh, game is. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, when I think of a company that really has their social media game on point on Twitter, I think of Wendy's. Oh yeah, Wendy's, Wendy's is a is very good with that. Yeah, very good. Like they're funny. They stay yeah. like when when Relevant. big time pulp culture people tweet mm-hmm. something, they're in the replies saying yeah. something crazy, and they're very 
It's a very good follow, and it makes, in my opinion, I agree with you. It makes the brand look good. Yeah, it makes them I funny. Think, you go, ah, oh, I like that. I'll spend my money there. Yeah, and if you and if you're a brand where you know, especially the younger generation, like social media is where a lot of them reside. If you can have a presence on there and look cool, like when Wendy's does their tweets for the most part, like you said, they're funny, aha uh-huh, tweets. Like it like, must be a, like a oh, twenty-two cool. year old like, you running someone, that account. Like it must. Yeah, be. like you have someone. Who gets it mm-hmm. that's going to appeal to, to kids to that you know and it's just yeah that's what you want to do when you're in your early 20s when you're, you're in your adults when you're in your late teens early 20s all you want to do is like be with the trends you want to just be trendy mm-hmm. you want to be cool and when a brand does that it's just like you, you did yeah. your job there you're appealing to your audience and i really like that and for people who don't yeah. care about that it's no sweat off their back because they just don't pay attention to social media that much so it really does no harm um to those people that aren't paying attention. So yeah, go check out what a maneuver They're They're a really, really good time and just, yeah, better than alternatives. I'll put it that way. Yes. We'll leave it there. <laughs> um, but yes, Royal Rumble is next week. We'll be talking all things Royal Rumble. Uh, but this week is a little bit, uh, heavier, I guess you could say a little bit different. Um, as everybody knows, I've made it very clear, and anyone that knows me, uh, 18 months ago, on June 18th, 2020, uh, I posted a video that kind of, well, not to be dramatic, but it changed my whole life, to be completely honest with you. Um, I posted my coming out video. Everyone knows the actual story. Um, I'll post the the link to the video if you want to pause this podcast and go and watch that first, just so you, if you've never seen it, go and take a listen to, it's about 18 minutes long. You do need to watch all of it to understand where my mindset is at. Um, but it was a video that I never really thought I would post in my life. There were certainly moments in my life that I was like, I will never tell anyone this and I'll just kind of live my life um, and and kind of move on. But I posted it and a lot of people just think you post and then your whole life's different and then you just kind of live. And that's not necessarily the case. Coming out is not just coming out in that moment. It's a whole process that I think I'm still dealing with a lot to this day. Um, But a lot of people don't know the story before. They don't know the actual story of what that day looked like for me. They don't know the actual story of the the lead up to posting that. They don't know my life when I was a teenager and and kind of where I was at in my head. They just kind of know the general outline of it. And I've never really gone into things in detail of like, what it was actually like for me as a kid and, and finding out about these things and going through my early twenties of realizing what I am and not telling anybody. And times I was nearly outed that actually did happen to me. And it was a crazy experience. Um, it's pretty wild. So I just want to, again, say to everybody, I might get a little emotional in some of these stories. Some of these stories do still make me emotional because it's still very fresh. I've only been out for 18 months. It's really not that long. Um, so just pre-warning, go with me guys. I'll, I'll do my best. And if I cry too much, JPJ is here to kind of lead a conversation if he needs to. He's kind of here to hold my hand today. And if he has any questions, I'm sure he'll pipe in. And I do have a lot of questions for him because I don't think there's, there's even stuff that JPJ doesn't really know where my head's going to be at. And there's some things that me and JPJ are two very different people, like everybody, but we've had two very different experiences in life. Um, and it's not just about sexuality, but it's just about actual experiences that um, I nev- ne- necessarily have never had and he has and vice versa. So um, it's kind of, I kind of, weirdly enough, as weird as this is going to sound, guys, I kind of like that JPJ is a cis, straight, white man right now. Well, not white, any color is fine, but like a, just a, a straight man because we have very different experiences and it's not an echo chamber. There's things that I don't understand about him. There's things that he doesn't understand about me. And we can kind of just meet in the middle. So, um, basically, this is where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with that actual day. I will, don't think in my life I'll ever forget that day of June 18th, 2020. Uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I'm at home a lot. And when you, you could probably attest to this, JPJ, um, when you're at home, what do you do when you're on your own? You just think, (laughs) you just think a lot. Like I'm sure you've been in moments where you've just been on your own and you've got nothing else to do. So you're just alone with your thoughts. Um, is that pretty confident that I can say that? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. I think when you're 
passing the time like that, that's a hundred percent what happens. Yeah. So when, yeah, hundred percent. So a lot had been on my brain. Um, I will say that about a year up to eventually posting this video, um, I kind of had it in my brain. I was like, I think I'm at a point where I'm finally accepting my life and accepting who I am. And I'm like, maybe I should just tell people. But every time I would think about it too much, I'd go, abort. Let's not do that. Because that sounds like not something I'd ever do. I'm a very, I worry a lot in general as a person of what other people is perception of me. I think I said it in that video. The opening sentence of that video is like, I worry about the perception I'm giving to other people just because I've always been like that because I've been so skeptical about who I am all through my life. I'm very worried about what other, I'm like, what do they think about me? Do they know what I know, but I don't want them to know. I've always been kind of that general, just that general concern of what other people think about me. So on and off for about a year leading up to this, I was like, I just want to tell people, I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't know when I was going to do it. I just felt like there was something in me that was very different that I was like, I'm ready to do this. And it's, it's time to kind of let people know, but I was a chicken shit about it. I was not feeling very brave. I was just scared shitless. And I was like, this isn't going to happen. This isn't, um, I'm never going to, I was, I was pretty committed to living my life as a lie. And that sounds pretty sad, but I was, I was ready to just, I'll just get in a relationship with a girl. I'll get married and no one will ever know. That's, that was my percent. And that's selfish on my part to do that to somebody else and selfish to myself. Um, can you be selfish to yourself? I guess so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I was, I was committed to doing that all my life. I'm like, there's no way that I'm going to ever tell someone about this. You look like you want to say something. Go for it. I want to ask a question. Yeah, go. And I don't know if you were eventually getting there anyway, but was there, was there something in particular about why? Why, what, like why I didn't want to tell anyone? Why you were, yeah. Like, cause you seem from what, from our off camera conversations and the way you talk about them on air, like you seem like you have a great relationship with your mom and your sister and that you're a very close, tight knit, loving family. Mm -hmm. Uh, was there, and you weren't, were you nervous about what their opinions of you, of how that <laughs> might change? Like what, and I'm sure this is all part of the conversation. Oh yeah, no, no, into, please. Right? At any point in this um, conversation, JPJ, feel free to chime in and just ask because yeah. um, I might, I'm going at a rapid pace here that I might miss some stuff. So just yeah. interrupt me and just. So I guess, like, I guess when you say like you were, you were totally content with living your life as a lie mm. and just, you know, dating a girl, marrying a girl, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, was that more of a, your surroundings were scaring you or was that more of an inner thing with you? I think it like was, what were, I what think were, it was both to be completely honest with you. It was more my, okay. So um, I think I've said this many times and it's not a, a secret. Um, I don't have much of a relationship at all with my dad. We had a very toxic relationship, especially throughout my teenage years. And it just kind of fizzled out and we just do not speak anymore. So that wasn't a real stress of mine. Um, I'm, I love my mom to bits. I cherish my mom so much because of dad, because I don't have that relationship with dad. I feel like I cling to mum a little bit more. And my mum is a very sweet lady. She's a very protective person and she's just, she just try. she's a people pleaser sometimes to a fault, but like, she's very much like, I just want to protect my kids. Like there's nothing in my mum's life that's more important than her four kids. That's her mm. priority in life, which any mum, I mean, I'm sure your mum is the same. My mum like, is the same. Yeah. My yeah. kids are my everything. Um, my sister and, um, my sister was never, my sister in my brain, um, I always knew that I would probably tell my sister first because while me and my sister are very, we're like the, we're, I'm closer with my sister than my bro, my older brother. It's just always, a, I love my older brother to bits, but I've just, we're closer in age, me and Shaylee. We're just very much like that. I wasn't worried about my sister's reaction. I always knew that she would probably be like, not the easiest to tell, but like in terms of reaction, I knew that nothing was really going to alter our relationship. Um, I was worried. The thing, I think the thing that I, I got most worried about leading up to this is like, I was very worried that I wasn't so much worried about the fact that I was gay. I was worried about the fact that I'm not going to be perceived as Josh anymore. 
there's going to be a difference and I feel like people are going to treat me different. I feel like I'm, people are going to be walking on eggshells around me. I just felt like I, my biggest fear was like, they're not, they're going to lose me. They're going to lose Josh as they know, because they have to adapt to Josh as somebody else, even though that was always me to them. That wasn't like, it was just, um, that wasn't what it was. So I think that was the biggest fear is losing relationships with what you think is yourself with other people, especially the people closest to you. The internet and content Josh was never worried about coming out because that is more of a, a surface level of like people in the public accept this more. Um, it was people close to me, like my family going to work was like, oh my God, like I didn't want, I have worked at this current job that I'm at for now at this, at that stage of coming out, I was there for seven and a half years. Um, I've been there since I was 17 years old. Um, so that's your growing up years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, they didn't know any different. And that was really scary to me. Um, everyone knows I live about an hour outside of Adelaide. I live in a relatively small town where everybody kind of knows everybody. And I have lived here since I was seven years old. So everybody knows who I am. You know what I mean? And it was just very all eyes on me kind of deal when that happened. And that was the biggest kind of, um, worry around me was that kind of stuff. But yeah, it was just the acceptance thing of like, I don't feel like people are going to accept me for who I am. Like I'm finally at a point where I'm accepting of it. I was not comfortable, but I was accepting of who I was. And then it was another process to be, to, to lay that acceptance onto other people and just assume that it was going to happen. But I'll, I'll tell you this, like a lot of people seem to think I just recorded the video and then was like, that was kind of the thing. Oh, he's had this plan for a long time. He's recorded this and he's just waiting I went to sit down to record that video. I no joke to you, probably about 20 times. I sat down, I pressed record, started the sentence and went, if I do this, this means it's real and I'm not going to do this. This was about six months prior to even releasing anything was, I tried to do that a lot and I couldn't do it myself. I, every time I'd sit down in my house, I would just sit at my computer and just kind of sit there and stare at the camera and be like, I'm not doing this. This means it's real and it's not real. There was still that kind of, I'm not going to speak for every single gay person in the world, but for me, I was constantly trying to talk myself out of being gay. Oh, it's just a phase. You're not really gay. You're just kind of being drilled into your head. Maybe you're not like, I was constantly trying to convince myself that it wasn't real. So recording a video like that was my final stamp on accepting that it was real. And I didn't want to believe it in a lot of ways. Um, it's, it was really, really difficult, but I'll, 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 I'll come back to the video in a second, but, um, I want to rewind to school because school was difficult. Um, because I wasn't sure of what was going on. I was just, when they say you're confused, it really is just a state of confusion. It's not like you just, maybe you are aware and you don't want to accept it, but I didn't really know. I didn't really understand what was going on. I'm like, why? What is, because you, puberty is a horrible time. Let's just be honest, whether it doesn't matter what your sexuality is, puberty is a mess. Your hormones are crazy. You're like, what is, what is going on in my body? Like being 14, 15 years old is a mess. You can like, your hormones are insane. Like you don't know what's oh, yeah. happening. You don't know what's happening yeah. in your own body, regardless of sexuality. But my big thing was like, why am I not feeling a sexual attraction to females? What is going on here? but I wasn't necessarily feeling a sexual attraction to males. It was just kind of like, because you're so focused on what society is like, this is what you are. I was like, why am I not like, I'm seeing all these kids get into relationships and stuff. Relationships. I say that at 15 years old, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're in high <laughs> yeah. school, but like I'm seeing yeah. all these people get into like having a girlfriend and I'm like, why is this not happening for me? Um, I had a very strong connection with both males and females, to be completely honest with you at school. Probably more, I did lean towards, especially when I was a kid, hanging out with more girls. But as I got older and into high school, I mean, I was just hanging out with kind of everybody. Um, so it wasn't like leaning yeah. into like, oh, I'm that guy that hangs out with all the girls. So a lot of people just assume that he's gay. It wasn't even that. It was just, I was just kind of a social, bit of a social butterfly at school. But I got bullied a lot for my sec being gay when I didn't even fucking know I was gay. And that kind of scars you for, and that's another thing that carried with me for so long of like, well, I don't want to lean in and 
tell people that were telling me that I was gay when I didn't even know that I am gay now because even though who gives a shit about people from school when you're in your, like, I don't, I don't talk to many of those, really any of those people. Yeah. Um, but it was just kind of like, well, I'm proving them right. And I don't want to do that. Cause kids are mean. Kids are mean oh, creatures. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Did you do with bullying at school? I mean, I was, I was fat my whole life. So I was a fat Here's, kid. Too, I, so. Yeah. So my thing is, I would say for the most part, not really. Okay. Like I, but I, I, I see I was always big. So like, you know, I went first through first, second, third grade. You, you kind of, you take your lumps where you take them. If you got to get into a scrap, you get into a scrap. But by the time, by the time I got to like junior high or high school, yeah, you had the occasional kid, you know, that you would get in an argument with and then they'd be like, oh, fat ass or whatever. Yeah. And I'd be like, dude, I don't. But like it didn't bother me. Yeah. And for the most part, I was pretty well liked. I got along with kind of everybody. I like, you know, high school, you have like, you know, the jocks, the metal kids, the. the you yeah, know, I got along with everybody. <laughs> yeah, I, I got along with everybody because I was like the funny chubby kid. Yeah, like, I was I a fairly just... funny kid and stuff like that. Yeah, so because, I was... I, you know, and I've talked. Yeah, I've talked about this with you know, a bunch of people in on whatever and off. But like when you grow up big or you grow up with something in your brain that is a deficiency to you or something like that, you make up with, you make up for it with different things. So like, I'm like, okay, I'm chubby. So how am I going to fit in? Cause I'm not, a, I'm not, Hand, like you're not a the, skinny, the hot, well put together. Yeah, you're not hot, athlete. I'm not what the quote. girls are going to yeah. think are hot, but look at me now, mm. but I'm not going to, I'm not what the girls are going to think. You're not societally, the, you're not, you're not correct. Society's when I got the 15 year old thing. star quarterback next to me with an eight pack of abs yeah. and I'm just this schlub at 15. I'm yeah. like, that's not going to attract the high school prototypical, you know? So how do, how do I get in with the crowds? All right, well, you'll be funny. You'll, you're going to make yes. it up with your personality. <laughs> yes. You know? And I was already naturally kind of funny to begin with, mm -hmm. but like, yeah, I leaned in on that shit. I leaned in on self-deprecating humor. I would make fun of myself for being fat before anybody wow. else could make fun of me for being fat. Speaking, so it speaking was, my language here, JPJ. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't like, it's not anything that sticks with me. Like, I, I don't think it defines who I am as a human now. It never really bothered me because for the most part, like I said, I was pretty decently liked. And, you know, up until about sixth or seventh grade, I was like, See, I, I'm the height I am now. I was this height in like fourth grade. So if you Maybe. if you fucked with me in fourth grade, you were gonna get your ass kicked. But fast forward to high school, you're a foot taller than me now. You're gonna ruin me. Yeah. But by the time I got to high school, we were friends because you were like, oh, whatever. Joe's cool. He's just chubby. <laughs> you know. So it's I, like, it was just I like relate that to that in a yeah. lot because a lot of me was trying to hide a lot of things with me. So I'm like, I'm gonna use humor. Because humor is going to be my friend in this thing. And it's going to get a lot of people to like me. Because like you, I kind of feel like I'm naturally funny. I've got a showmanship about me. And because I did so yeah. much deflecting of not wanting to kind of reveal who I was. When it was time, I wanted all lies on me. Because I could use... Of course. I could use my humor. Like, this is going to be a surprise to nobody. But the thing I was best at at school was drama class. Was I was good at plays and I was good at acting and I was good at performing arts, really music, drama. I was good at that kind of stuff yeah. because it was where I could kind of go, well, I can be as extra as I want to be here because you're acting. doesn't matter. You're just good at this. Like I excelled in those things. Like a lot of teachers said, you need to go to university um, and study performing arts because you've got a natural gift in it, but I just never did. Yeah. Um, but that was what I was good at at school. So humor was, and it still is to this day. How many jokes do I make about being gay in an episode yeah. of this show? It's just, it's what I use. It's a coping mechanism for everything mm -hmm. because i I like self-deprecating humor. It's funny. And I like to make people laugh and I still do it to this day. I did that at school. I was a very self-deprecating person at school still am to this day i don't know if that will ever go and it's not a, i don't think it's a bad thing it's just humor no, it's just what i, 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 I use. think it can be a bad thing it yeah. can be a bad thing depending on how you mentally view it mm -hmm. but i think in general being having self-deprecating humor in yourself like that's 
It's not always a bad thing. No, like, I, I am still self-deprecating from time to time, but I use it to get, I know it's not how I really think of myself. No, I I'm don't either. using it to get a laugh. I've, I've you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's a funny thing for me to laugh on stereotypes about me. And I'm like, well, it's just playing into when people laugh and people yeah. have a good time. That's how I am with it. It's just, it's just ha ha funny. Um, but yeah, I used a lot of self-deprecating humor at school. Um, but I guess a lot of people are probably wondering, uh, Josh, when was the first time you really accepted or really realized that you were gay? Um, I can't pinpoint a moment. That's probably a really boring answer, but I can't pinpoint the exact thing of like, I'm gay. It was just, okay, so I'm a kid. I'm 15 years old. Um, I'm starting to discover my body, I guess you could say, and what, what kind of gets me going and what doesn't. Um, and for some reason I was like, why isn't the female body doing that to me? Why, why am I not? And I will say this without getting too sexual and graphic, um, before anyone asks, yes, I have been with girls because how would I know that I don't like women unless I've tried it? Um, and I tried it several times and it was not my thing, um, at all. Um, and I was like, even at that point though, of like, okay, I'm not really feeling this. I still didn't realize that I was like, I, well, I'm definitely a homosexual. I was like, maybe I just, what about if I'm, there's a lot of people in this world that are asexual. What about if I'm just asexual and I just don't like sex? What about if it's that? Mm -hmm. Because I had great emotional connections with women. So what was going on here? Like I could emotionally connect with a woman. Yeah. There was so just no physical attraction. There was no physical attraction. Um, and then I tried men and I was like, okay, well, I'm definitely not asexual. Um, but <laughs> like that was a, Oh, I remember the first time I was ever with a guy. And then after it was kind of over and I was a mental wreck, this kind of guilt come over my body that I'll never forget that day. Um, not even for the physical act of things, just for the after of like being like, oh, I'm a horrible human being. Like it was like, I, I, I've talked to a lot of gay people, um, and they said they felt the same thing. There's just this guilt that comes over your body that you're like, I'm disgusting. Um, I, I had, I never, I never, I will say, I don't want people to get too worried or anything. I never got to the point where I physically didn't want to be on this earth, but I got to the point where it was the closest you could get without doing it. It was pretty bad. It was pretty, it was pretty bad. Um, and this was, was this directly after? You're yeah. The first... So I was about 19. Now. Something around that Okay. Age. Go on. Were you brought up religious? At no, all? not at all. So there was no Quite like, the religion opposite. backstory because no. certain religions tell you that that is a, that is a sin. Oh, I know. And you shouldn't <laughs> do it and blah, blah, blah. So I didn't know if. That no. was part of why you felt that way. Like it was just this, you know, I think it was, was a, a realize. I think it was it a all. realization of once you lean into that, what your, once you lean into anything of what your body wants or what your mind is questioning or what your mind wants, mm -hmm. there's this certain realization that comes in after it. I was nervous as heck as any time you are, you know, that kind of stuff, but I was nervous as heck. It happened. And then it kind of, he was gone and I was just sitting there and I was like, Oh my God, I am, this really just happened. And what the hell, why did I just do that? And just feeling like dog shit. And it lasted a long time. Um, just this, I just felt like I was a less than person because I lent into that thought in my brain of not, mm. of being with another man. And, um, yeah, it was really, it was really difficult for a very long time. Um, and it took a long, it did take a long time to get past that, of that feeling. Um, cause there would be moments. It's not like there's this one moment that you're like not accepting and then you're accepting. It's these, it's waves of like, okay, I'm fine. And then I'm not, and then I'm really bad. And then I'm really good. And then I was ready to tell the world and I'm not fine. And there was certain, mm. obviously there's certain men throughout my life that obviously know that I am gay, but yeah. I wasn't telling the world. And I did allude to this before, but, um, there was a time I was nearly outed and, I don't know what would have happened. That's the worst thing you can do to someone, whether you're trans, whether you're gay, whether you're questioning, whatever you identify as to out somebody and take away that moment of letting them decide when it's time for the world to know is like, I couldn't think 
of anything worse. But there was a time that I was nearly outed by somebody very, it was a very real thing that was going to happen to me. And I was ready to just be like, if this happens to me, I don't know what's going to happen because you're taking away my right to tell people. And if I wanted to tell people yeah. and not even realizing what was going on in my own brain, it's just a, it was a mind fuck. But yeah, for a long time, I felt this, the, the word that comes to mind is just guilt. I felt this guilt towards the world. I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it was just really a guilty yeah. feeling of like, I'm just <laughs> gross. Like what a horrible human being I am. A lot of people don't think to see, don't seem, seem to think that homophobia and all this thing isn't like prominent in the world. And that's just not true. So you're actually in the shoes of someone who is, I, I just don't agree with that statement at all. It is very much still a real thing. There's certain places in the world where gay men and, and gay women and trans people and all different kinds of people are killed because they're just for sexuality. Yeah. So I don't, I don't agree with that. Okay. Maybe it's not in my everyday life, but it is still a thing, especially in that time. You don't think about anything good. You just think about all the bad, mm -hmm. all of the reasons I didn't yeah. want to come out. Not the reasons I did. Oh, I can live openly. Who gives a fuck? That was my assessment of it. Like, I don't care. I don't want people around me to know anything about this. So when I was, I was about 21 when I was nearly outed and luckily it didn't happen. Um, but yeah, it was, it was rough. Uh, but we covered a lot there. Want to ask anything before I move along with this kind of story? <laughs> uh, no, I'm good. Okay, I'm cool. Good. Okay, cool. I'm just giving you the opportunity just in case I go too far and you're like, wait a minute, I want to ask about this. Um, let's talk about the actual posting of this and coming to terms with everything and being ready. So I said about a year before is when I was like, started to think about telling people. I was like, maybe I should just tell the people around me for some reason. It's very millennial of me, but I always wanted to post a video. I just wanted to just, mm -hmm. this was the easiest way to not have to explain my story 3000 times. I just want to mm -hmm. go, if you really want to know, especially at that time when I didn't want any person talking to me, I didn't want anyone to talk to me. I was like, please don't talk to me about this. It's so uncomfortable. It's so awkward. I don't know what to do. Just watch this video. Mm -hmm. It's so much, this explains that 18 minute video explains everything you need to know right now. And then when I'm ready to have mm -hmm. conversations with you, I'll have conversations. Um, so I remember the day it was not a thing that I was just, I woke up and was like, tonight I'm doing this. It was not that mm. kind of a day. Um, it was a Thursday. I remember it was a Thursday. It was the 18th of June, 2020. I woke up and of course dynamite is live on a Thursday here because time zones. I got up. I watched Dynamite. It was the middle of winter. It was a cold day. I remember it was really, really cold. I don't know why I remember these details, but I remember watching Dynamite. Uh, Cody Rhodes was in the main event. I couldn't tell you who he was wrestling, um, but we were mid pandemic, by the way, everybody just want to say middle of the pandemic right now, just like heat of the moment, no fans. Like I remember watching Dynamite. Um, I remember that day for some reason I had a giant salad for lunch. Like I just, Felt like I wanted to eat a lot of lettuce that day, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. I felt really good that day. You know, when you have those days where you feel a bit sluggish or you feel a bit yeah. gross. I just remember feeling really optimistic and positive And I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to conquer the world today. I posted a lot on TikTok that day. It was getting a lot of views. It was boosting my ego. And then it got to about 6.30 at night. And I was like, all of a sudden I just crashed. You know, when you're really high up and happy and then you just crash down and you know, I'm like, why mm -hmm. do I feel so shitty? I just feel so shitty all of a sudden. I just had my dinner. I was like, what's going on? And then all of a sudden this kind of this, this thing came over my body. I'm like, I hadn't thought about it in a long time at this point. Um, I was like, I'm going to tell everybody I'm ready to tell people. And I don't know what came over my body. There was nothing that triggered it. It just, I started feeling really sluggish and I just went, I'm going to do this. Um, I finally going to record this video. Like I said, I had tried to record the video a countless number of times of just trying to sit down. And mm. for some reason I was adamant. Um, I remember what I was wearing. I remember everything about it. I remember where my computer was. I remember sitting down and I said, I'm not going to edit any of this. I'm not going to do any of this. I'm just simply going to just talk and just let my kind of thoughts run wild. I didn't have a planned script. I didn't say, I'm going to say this first and say this first. I just kind of let my mind and just remove, you know, that filter you have from brain to mouth. 
I just removed that filter and just said, let me just see what happens, see how long this goes for. I didn't know if it was going to go for four hours. I didn't know whether it was going to go for five minutes. I just wanted to record it to get it off my chest. It wasn't necessarily about telling everybody. It was about telling this and having it there and going, okay, it's off my chest. So I recorded yeah. it. it. It was what it was. Um, again, I'll link that video. And I do, if you don't haven't watched that video, you don't know who I am, watch that video. You'll learn a lot about me. Um, and it will just kind of tie everything up together nicely for this. Um, so basically I recorded the video, I pressed stop and I just felt this instant relief. I was like, oh my God, that feels so good. Yeah. Like just to get that off my chest. And I just said, oh, I'm, I don't know when I'm going to post that. It's just there to be posted. Um, I felt much better. I didn't feel so sluggish. I got up from my computer. I had a glass of water. I sat back down at my computer. I opened YouTube and said, I'm uploading this tonight. This is the thing. I'm going to do this. This is, it's time. I uploaded it. I had it scheduled for a time that night. This was about eight o'clock my time at this point. And I just kind of sat there for ages and I'm like, oh, actually I don't, it's uploaded, but I'm not going to put this. It's just, it's privated. It's not ready to go to the world. Mm. So it goes about, I remember the time I looked at the time and it was 9, 12 PM this Thursday night. I remember. And I said, no, this is, I'm never going to feel, I'm never going to feel ready, but I never feel more ready than right now. So I uh, messaged my, um, first person, it was time to tell the first person, um, in person. And I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anybody. I told my sister first and sister. Her, yeah, uh, was, uh, yeah. then fiance, they were, they're the two closest people in my life. They live right across the road from me. It was really important to walk over to their house and tell them now, mind you, it's nine o'clock at night. And I messaged him, Shaylee, I need to come over to your house because I have something important to tell you. It's like, bitch, why? It's nighttime. <laughs> like they were for some reason really early in bed that night. They were watching a movie. They were just like, we're in bed. We don't really feel like you coming yeah. over. And I said, just please let me come over. It will take five minutes. That's all I ask. And they're like, okay. So they unlocked the door. I walked over and I, I remember their, their bedroom is right at the front of their house. So they're, they're in bed, they're sitting up and I'm standing in like, um, they have like an ensuite that goes into like their bathroom. I was standing in the, okay, like, yeah. the door frame and I just said, I have something to tell you. And they were like, what is so important that you're coming over on a Thursday night at like nine 30 at night to come over to talk to us. And I'm like, I just need to say something. And they're like, okay. And I just started weeping. Like I yeah, I was gonna say crying. sobbed like sobbed like a baby and I couldn't even get a sentence out. They're like, what is wrong? They thought someone had died. They literally thought someone had died and they just looked at, and I looked at my sister right in the eyes and I just nodded and I just said, Shaylee, I'm gay. And she was like, it was just like silence. And I was like, that felt like 20 minutes. I think it was about two seconds, but it felt like about 20 minutes. Cause I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. They could turn around and say, get out of my house. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And I was just crying and they just said, it's fine. It's okay. And I just sobbed. I'm going to start crying in a minute. Oh, oh. Um, I just sobbed. And um, the thing that always makes me so emotional, I don't know why. Um, I used to, so my, I adopted a, a rescued a dog years ago named Banjo. And I work a lot. It just wasn't working out. My sister's home a lot. I said, hey, I think you need to take Banjo because he's just not getting the love from yeah. me. So I think you just need to have Banjo and I can still see him all the time. But Banjo was right by my side and he jumped up and hugged me and I just cried, like, like cried yeah. like a baby. Um, and my now brother-in-law, um, was like, do you need a hug? And I'm just like, please just, I don't want any physical touch right now. Just, can you just yeah, go away? Yeah. I just said, okay, I'm just going to go home now because I need to go. I've got a video to be posted. I'm, I just wanted to tell some people before I posted the video, because it's important to me to tell some some friends and some family before. Yeah, people you, know, you love. Yeah, yeah, so, and they were like, okay. And they just said, I love you. And that was all I needed. I just needed people to tell me it's okay and that they love me because that was my biggest two fears is that people weren't going to love me anymore. Um, so I, I went mm -hmm. home. I told her I wanted to ring a couple of friends. My fucking older brother hates, hates phone calls. And he's like, I'm not answering the phone. So I had to tell him over text message because, and he just, he was, for some reason, my older brother really really made me nervous to tell. I think it's just because okay. 
you want to you want to be like your older brother and you want to aspire to be especially my brother's seven years older than me so there's a quite a big age gap um so you don't want to disappoint him and because i didn't talk to my dad he was the closest thing like that to me so i didn't want to disappoint him yeah but he said it's fine i've been waiting for this day for quite a while like just it's okay um so i just wanted to tell him and then my mum was she worked late nights on thursdays so i tried to ring her and she wouldn't answer. So I had to message her. And then she rang me when she'd seen the message. And um, I just wanted acceptance. The bit that was like, when I clicked public on that video um, mm -hmm. and posted it to Twitter and then to my Facebook, I just had this outpouring of messages and it was so overwhelming. I didn't know what to do. I was like, this is so scary. And I don't know what's going on. Um, um, but just so many kind messages that sometimes I still go and read, um, to this very day, because it just, it reminds me when I'm feeling a little bit down in the dumps about some things that like, okay, it's fine. Um, there'll mm -hmm. never be something in my life that's scarier or more brave to do than that. I will happily pat myself on the back for being brave in that situation and doing something that's so out of my comfort zone. Um, but just. I just, I just got like, my phone was like ding, 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 of just all these messages and notifications and just from Facebook and Twitter and my YouTube comments and just so many people just being like, oh my God, like, thank you for sharing your story. Cause I was pretty open in that story. I'm sure you've, yeah. I think you've, you said you've watched it, JPJ. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, pretty yeah. open about pretty much everything. Um, I didn't really mm -hmm. leave too many layers of the onion to be peeled. I just kind of cut right into that thing. Um, cause it was really important to me. There was no middle ground with this. It was like, tell nothing or tell yeah. all. And I was just ready to tell all. Um, a lot of people was telling me that I come out pretty late in life, 24. Um, I think a lot of people don't is realize, there, well, I was going to say, is there an average age? Like, is, a lot of people, is there a research a lot of people know, that says it's an average age or something uh, like that? Or I, I just feel like there's a lot of experiences that I missed out on for me personally. Yeah. And one thing I did want to ask is. Do you think if the pandemic never happened, that would have changed your timeline at all? I don't know. It was just because there was a lot of people at pandemic? home. So yeah. I was kind of like, this is, I'm just not doing a lot. I'm not going out. It was like a, a little bit of a security blanket because it wasn't like I could go out to a club because, and a lot of people yeah. would know. And like, well, that that's kind of where, because I know you had said you started thinking about it about a year before you actually made the posted the video right um but i'm thinking if the pandemic never happened and everyday life was regular everyday life that we knew it mm -hmm. pre-pandemic and you were you know going out more or going to see your friends or family more and you didn't have that extra time sitting at home and thinking about things and thinking about your situation do you think that might have yeah, changed how everything I, happened, I guess. I, I I don't know. I'm looking down at my phone at the moment because I'm just trying to um uh, bring up the post of when I came out because I want to read something off of it. But um, I don't know, to be honest, because yes, I did use it as a security blanket. However, I, um, I also... I don't think it would have because I was just... I was ready. I wasn't ready. You're I should ready. say I was the most ready that I have ever. It was the you most. Said, you said that you were the most ready you, you had been to that point. Yeah. You can I was now, I don't think I was ever going to be more ready than, than that day. You know what I mean? Like, I don't okay. think I was ever going to be yeah. more ready than, than that time to, um, than that time to do it because I was just, yeah, I, I, I can't really explain it any other way. I was just, it was as ready as I ever really thought I could be. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, you know, it, it was just, no, to answer your question, no. The pandemic wouldn't have changed anything, I don't think. If I think about it, no, I don't think it would have. Um, You know, it's, uh, it's weird to think about this all because it kind of brings back a lot of emotions and a lot of feelings that I had in the time of how scared I actually was. Like, I didn't want to look at mm -hmm. anything. I didn't want to, I had work the next day and I remember waking up that day to a lot of messages from people from work of like, oh my God, I just seen this and um, blah, 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 blah. 
And I was like, mm. I started at three o'clock the next day. I remember that 3 PM. Um, and I was like, I've got to find a way to get out of work because I can't go to work. I cannot do this. Um, I mm. didn't, I went to work and to be honest, not that many people were asked about it because at the same time people care, but they also don't, you know what I mean? Like people have yeah. their lives and they don't care. Not in a nasty way. They just, they just live in their life. Also, I think a lot of people were a little cautious around me. They're like, I don't want to bring it up at work. He's at work. It's not probably the time. Talk about this. I do remember one person coming up and just, they didn't say anything. They just said, they just gave me a fist bump. And I was like, that's nice. It's just That's very nice. kind to do of like, yeah. and it was a person, by the way, I won't say their name, but it was a person I didn't really expect. You know what I mean? I call them a casual yeah, work nice. acquaintance. That, that must have been, yeah, yeah that must have been a nice feeling. Though. It was. Like it was, it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, cool, man. Thank or you. Girl, I don't know. It was a man. Was it was yeah, a like, cool. Yeah, like, cool. Um, That's he's come up cool. and, and fist bumped me and um, just kind of like a, you know, good. Yeah, like, I see you. I see you. Good like, for you, man. I see yeah. you. Yeah. Um, and then a few other yeah. people come up to me and just kind of talk to me. My boss was really cool about it. He gave me a really nice message that day of like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know this about you and stuff like that. And we had a nice conversation about it a few days later. I had a lot of conversations about it, to be completely honest with a lot of people. Cause I'd worked there for, I've worked there for quite a while. I built yeah, up a they, lot of they relationships. Knew, they saw you grow up, you know? Yeah. yeah they, I was a kid. Seen you grow up. Some of them. I, yeah. You I, were... I, I was a kid. See, so this is. That, so this is how I, I've been, I'm older, I'm 36. So like, and I, I, I run a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. That's the shoot gig mm -hmm. is I run a coffee shop. So I've experienced that on the other side. I've been your boss Yeah. where I hired this 16 or 17 year old kid and they stayed working with me throughout high school and college. Mm -hmm. And then they turn into this 22, 23 year old adult. Mm hmm and they figure out who they are. I've, I've had, mm. I've had partners and, and employees of mine that have worked for me that figured out that they were non-binary yeah. in their time with yeah. me or figured out that they were trans or whatever, you know, like, or gay, like I've experienced it all from that level where it's like, oh, I've watched this person become who they truly are. Like I've watched it in front of my, in yeah. front of my eyes and it's, as someone on the outside that doesn't go through those day-to-day -day emotions of how difficult and how, you know, all the feelings that that must feel going through or realizing that, like, it's crazy seeing it on the other side where it's like, oh, this is something about you that like, um, A, you know, and you did it on a more of a public forum, mm -hmm. but for the people that know you day-to-day, -day, like, when you eventually told them or they came up and you had that conversation, like that's one of those things where it's like, oh, well, like I appreciate you feeling comfortable enough to put me on the list of people that you valued knowing this information. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just kind of. No, I get that. You know? Yeah. And there was people like that, um, like I said, at work and just in my life um, that did go out of their way to have that conversation with me or to give me a message mm -hmm. or to call me or whatever it was. And those are the people that I valued to know even more than just the extent of like the surface level of like what is going on. Exactly. Um, so I do understand that it is really, I don't know well, I do know what it's like to be on the other side, but I also don't cause I can sympathize and empathize a little bit more with people that are going through it because I've been through it. Um, but I never truly know what it's like. Like I've never had a, I wouldn't say never, but I've never really gone. I don't know what it's like to be on the other side when I told these people, I don't know what their, mm. I know their reactions to me, but what is their reactions just to each other? You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I'm sure I can nearly guarantee that it would have been a topic of conversation that day for some people. Like, Hey, did you see this last night on, on Facebook? You know, did you oh, see yeah. that video? And it's like, I don't truly know what their initial reactions were. And I don't really care to know. It's not my business. Um, no. but yeah, I did have conversations with people around me the coming days and, um, they were very encouraging and. I learned a lot about people. I also learned that a lot of people are going to treat me far worse and a lot of treat mm. people are going to treat me far better just for the fact that I am gay. And guess what? They're both as bad as one another, to be completely honest with mm -hmm. you, because it doesn't feel nice when you're getting treated poorly, of course, because of it, but it also doesn't feel great when you're treated better just because you are gay, because it's mm. not, you're like, you don't like me because I'm me. You like me because I am no. gay and that's weird. Yeah. Um, mm. but there are people like that. Um, I learned a lot about people 
um, in the sense of who's really comfortable about talking to me about it and just asking questions and not worrying about offending me and who the fuck is cautious and walking on eggshells, which I understand, but also like, especially in that first period of like, I'm super sensitive right now. Um, be careful what you ask me, but also ask me, you know what I mean? Like it was weird. It was weird. Yeah. At the Now, 18 months later, I'm f- fairly comfortable for the most part. There is still days, um, but I'm fairly comfortable with being like, I'm not going to get offended unless you straight up are just homophobic towards me. I'm not going to get offended with what you talk to me about joke about it. I don't care. Like my friends that have a joke with me about it and I'm a self deprecating person. I like jokes like that. It makes me feel comfortable. It also, I know that they're comfortable enough to make that joke in front of me. Do you know what I mean? Like I find that endearing. Yes. So some people don't and some people get extra sensitive and I'm not saying one's right over the other, but for me personally, Make the joke. I don't mind. As long as you're not straight up being offensive and it's not hard to just tell someone, hey, you probably stepped over the line a little bit there. Just take it back yeah. a little bit. I'd rather you go mm. too far and me just telling you they're not far enough and holding back on just being yourself around me. I just don't find that fun. But that's just me personally. Calm down, everyone. Um, but <laughs> I went from, it was weird. I went from posting that video and being really, really super sensitive to within a few months feeling pretty comfortable. I was pretty Mm. comfortable pretty quick. Like I was like, oh, this is what I've missed out on my whole life. You know what I mean? Like this is what I can be me. I can be 100% myself. It was time. It was, it was, um, it was everything. It was just kind of like, oh my God, like I'm just living my life. My, my content got better out of it. Um, everything just kind of weird. Everything just kind of fell into place. It was weird. Go on. Well, you just mentioned your content. Um, how long were you making content before coming out? Two years. Okay. Do you think making content and how comfortable you are making content helped at like yes. with the confidence factor? Yes. Because I was a doing very, it? very unconfident person before I started content. And then when I got into content and actually people started to take a little bit of notice of me, I got way more mm. self-confident. I was like, oh, I'm good at this. I can do this. And it made me yeah. just confident in general. And I think that gave me a lot of courage to be able to mm. at least talk about this and to go through it because I knew my content was going to change a little bit because there's certain elements of my content that I feel a little bit more pride in and I feel a little bit more, okay, like I don't have a huge following. I've never boosted and, and boasted about the fact that I have a huge following, but I do have somewhat and I never know who's listening and me being open and me being kind of a little bit in a sense overly sexualized sometimes i do it on purpose because i i just want it to be normal like a why yeah. I, those people that feel uncomfortable i want to make them feel so fucking uncomfortable because it's it's a you problem that is not on me it's not on any gay person it's not on any trans mm. person it's not on any whatever it's it is on you if you feel uncomfortable with that because you happily i hate this is an argument that i always have oh my god Gay couples and bisexual couples and all of this should not be sexualized on television, should not be kissing on television. Okay, there's an argument for that. But that argument also has to say that straight couples should also not be kissing on television. They should also not be sexualized on television. They should also not be publicized on television for your children to see. It's the same thing. Yeah. I just want to, I just, I'm, I cannot change the world. I can change my world though. And my world is, in my world, it's normal. And I post a lot. You've seen my, t- my tweets and my TikToks. I do yeah. it on <laughs> purpose because yeah. people feel yeah. uncomfortable it's very around calcul- it. It's calculated. Because it's it's, calculated. I just want to normalize shit. It becomes, yeah. you are now familiar with how I tweet and how I post TikToks and stuff. It's normal to you that I'm doing that. So therefore, yes, I can't yes. change the world, but I can change my world. And it's normal for me. So if a, if a, pers- if a dude or a or a girl can go around and say how much they want to fuck this girl and fuck that guy. I can say how much I want to fuck that guy. You know what I mean? Like I can say that because it's normal. I just don't, we have this thing of like, it's not, people say, oh, but it is normal. And is this, well, if it was normal, it would also be okay to say it in front of children. And a lot of people don't find it okay to say it in front of children. I have a little brother. He is 11, uh, 12 years old. When I came out, he was nine. I had a conversation with him. Do you think he cared? Kids are the easiest people to tell. They don't give two fucks. Yeah. I was going to say, I probably, he didn't give a shit. Especially in this time and age. I, I, 
Yeah. I do actually see the future changing. Like kids are just more and more aware of what's around them. And they're just more and more mm. normalized to what there's a lot more gay couples and, and bisexual couples and trans couples and everything like that now than there was when I was his age. Then even more oh, yeah, than when sure. you were his age and, and oh, yeah. back and back and back and back and back. Um, it's normal. It's be, it's becoming, it's becoming normal. We're on the the train of it becoming normal, but Zach was the mm-hmm. easiest person to tell. He just went, okay. Cause I said, there's yeah, going cool. to be a time cool. where it's Christmas time and Shaylee has a husband and Dylan has a wife and I have a husband and it's normal. So Zach was like, Josh, I don't, I really don't take this the wrong way. He yeah, said like, this whatever. He was like, yeah. I don't care. Cause he said, yeah. like, I asked him, I said, cause he's like, listen, he's 12 now. So, you know, things are starting to change for him a little bit. And there's you oh, know, yeah. certain things, you know, that is a little early, but you know, in the coming years, I just said, mm-hmm. Zach, what's going to happen if one of your friends at school date someone that is the same gender as them. And he was like, okay. Like yeah, so nonchalantly. And it was the best reaction yeah. you can have. He didn't make a big deal. Like, oh, it's normal. It's fine. It's everything. He just went, okay. And just kind of moved yeah. on with the conversation. I'm like, top work. You know what I mean? Like top of the mm-hmm. morning to you, lad. Like just the best. So kids, all those parents that say, and again, we shouldn't do this. We shouldn't teach kids about, you know, gay gay relationships and all this kind of stuff. It's like, well, I tell you something. No. I could have learned a lot in sex ed if it was also taught for same sex couples as well. Cause I learned a lot about same sex sex. Um, a lot just in my later years and being like, what is going on? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like sex ed is awkward in general who like to do sex ed. Nobody, yeah. but yeah. like, it, yeah. You're taught a very standard one way and there's many different avenues for many different people. So it is interesting to think about it like that, but yeah. Um, I know I just gave out a lot of information, but, um, yeah, that, so basically what I wanted to kind of now, I guess where I'm at 18 minutes, uh, 18 minutes, 18 months after the fact that I've come out is that I'm learning more and more every day that coming out is much more than just that. It's such a process mm. to even get to where I am now, where people probably see me and they're like, he's a pretty confident guy. He is pretty comfortable with who he is, um, which for 99% of the time I am. Um, the 1% of time where every day or every other day at this stage, I have to look at a comment on social media calling me, I'm going to use a slur, but I can say it because I am one. Um, calling me a faggot or calling me a poof or saying that I don't have the right to get married or doing these kind of things that I see on TikTok and I see on YouTube and I see on Twitter. That's not fun. And while I'm pretty good with that kind of stuff and I'm just like, shut the fuck up. It's not Mm. like a nice thing that you don't have to deal with that. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to get those comments. You're sure you get other things. And I'm not saying that you don't get any hate or anybody that's the same though. It's not the yeah, same. It's, not, it's, it, it's you're questioning same. my way of life simply because you don't agree with it. Listen, I'm not asking everybody right. to champion me and go, yeah, do what you want to do. But if you don't have anything nice to say, this is a rule in general, then just shut the fuck up. Shut yeah. up. I mean, it's one of the one of the earliest things you learn, usually, when you're a kid, is hey, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. It's real simple to just to yourself. shut the fuck up. Yeah. It's like, real it's just simple not, to just shut the fuck up. It doesn't make but everybody today just feels like they don't have to. And it's like, hey man, just because you think something doesn't mean you gotta say that. You can keep that thought. You can still think that, but no, not all of us need to know that. what you think about everything. No. Like it just And not only that, um you know? you're questioning someone's way of life simply because you don't aren't that. Or you aren't I always just say this as like I've had people in my life that are parents that have kind of turned their nose up at me because of the way I am. I'm like, what about if your son or your daughter came out and said something mm-hmm. like, I'm bisexual or I'm gay or I'm a lesbian or I'm questioning my gender or whatever it may be. Would you just turn around and kick him in the mud? Like that's your kid. I mean, I, everyone I is know. someone's son. Is Everyone is someone's yeah. daughter. Like I just, um, yeah, it's just, um, it's just really, it's just a thing to think about, especially for a parent, but for anybody, like 
you're someone's sister, you're someone's brother, you're someone's aunt, uncle. It doesn't matter. Um, I think probably though, I will say that there is some things in my life that during this time, I do have a little bit of a regret with. And I think the biggest one um, that I'm going to try and stay as least sobby as possible for, because it's still very fresh, but um, as everyone knows, my grandpa passed away last month. Uh, was it November or was it December, early December? Within the last month and a half, my grandpa passed away. Um, and he was really sick. Everyone knew he was really sick. For the last three years of his life, he was suffering with dementia. Um, he had a bad mm. fall that just kind of triggered everything and everything just spiraled. Yeah. Um, I was never able to tell my grandpa that I was gay um, because he, he didn't understand. He didn't know what was going on. And now that he's mm. gone... Um, it makes me very just like, I wish I did this sooner because I, mm -hmm. he was growing up, my grandpa, like I said, I had a very toxic relationship with my dad. My grandpa was like my dad. He raised me, yeah. um, and kind of made me the man I am today. And it's just very, um, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's just a big regret that I have of like, I wish I was able to tell my pa that I was because I just wanted him to know, um, and there was no way I could tell him in the state that he was in. Um, but I will say that in his, the last time that I did see him when they kind of said like, Hey, we think it's going to happen soon. You might want to come and say your goodbyes. Um, mm -hmm. I did hold his hand and just said that I was, um, and whether he, he didn't understand what was going on, but I, for me know that at least something, but it is a regret that I have that I wasn't able to tell him because it was just very important to me. And, um, I just wanted to know what his able reaction would have been. Um, cause my grandpa is a very, oh my God, my grandpa was a very sarcastic. I, <laughs> I'm assuming the first thing he would have done was a joke. And that's what I yeah. would have wanted from him because yeah. uh, my grandpa was a shit stirred. Oh my God. He just, oh my God. He used to just tease and tease and tease. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, Oh, yeah. but like, I have a feeling that's how, that's how I'll be when I get older. I think this I will too. One of those, like just I'll, stir just, the pot. I'll just be constantly fucking with people. Just yeah. My grandpa time. was like that all so much and I miss him every day, but, um, yeah, it's a big regret of mine. Um, so I guess to anybody that's out there, that's listening to this, it's maybe whatever it may be, but if you are questioning or, or, or trying to learn who you are and, and all ready to come out and not really sure how to do it, just make sure that you don't force yourself, but make sure you remember that tomorrow is never guaranteed um, with people around you, for yourself, anybody. So sometimes when you aren't ready, that is when the time is to do it. And I can tell you that it does change your life and it does make you so much stronger as a person and everything in your life just kind of falls into place after you do. I'm not saying it's going to fix your life or anything like that. And I'm a very lucky person because I've heard of many stories where families don't accept them. Um, especially if you're religious, I'm very lucky that I'm not religious in that sense. Um, and you know, a lot of families don't accept people. A lot of people take their own lives. Um, and I always thought the worst, you know what I mean? I just wanted acceptance and I just wanted people to know that I'm still myself. There's nothing different about me. I'm still the same person, yeah. just this element you're now open to. Um, but it took some time. Um, and it took a lot of moving room and needle room. And my mom, like I said, at the start of this show is a very protective person. And she was just worried that every time I was in a slight mood, someone was picking on me or someone was saying stuff. Yeah, and I was sure. just like, no, I'm yeah. just, I'm just, just being an ass today. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. It's okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, just a grump. but she's just, she's finally gotten to the point where she's just kind of like chilled out with that. She's still as protective. She's still my mom. Oh, someone revving past the speed, speed race. Oh yeah. 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 NASCAR. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if she's finally gotten to the point where she's a little bit chiller about it and stuff like that. But for the first few months, it was like a little rough. I was just like, mom, back up. Like, it's okay. Like, I'm still a grown adult. I don't need someone kind of guiding me through this. Yeah. I, I've got this, you know what I mean? Like, I've I've got someone. And I think um, the next part is, is that I have dated guys in the last 18 months and um, but never mm -hmm. really got to the point where it was serious enough to introduce them to my family or m my mom or something like that. I think that's going to be the next part of the coming out process is like, okay, people are accepting, but what's going to happen when it's actually in front of them? Because for the most part in this town, there is gay people. I'm not saying there isn't. Um, but in my family circle, my friend circle, um, 
there hasn't been a lot of gay couples and I don't know how my friends are going to react. I don't know how, you know, everyone's different when they're actually in front of it. I think for the most part, yeah, it'll be fine. Um, but it's going to be the next part, even for me, because there is still a part of me that has internalized homophobia. And what I mean by that is that I don't know if I'm going to be able to walk down the street and hold my partner's hand. Also, I hate that word, partner, ha- boyfriend, boyfriend. Um, hmm. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that with fear of like people being like, Ugh, it's two men. Even though everyone knows me, uh, I don't know if I'm going to yeah. be able to kiss my significant other in public because is that weird? Um, but I get weird around that when a man and a woman do it. I don't like public yeah. displays of affection. I think it's weird. Um, so I don't know, but there is a part of me that's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go into work and do my shopping with this person because like, that just seems like a whole nother thing that I've got to get past. And that's just yeah. a part of it. And that's what I'm learning. But um, it is interesting and it is very, it's a hurdle that I'll have to cross. But um, I think the overlining message of me wanting to kind of reshare some things and tell some things that I've never really said was just, it's just the ultimate thing that you want when you're going through this process, it's just love. You just want people to accept you and and love you. And, and you just want someone to tell you that everything is going to be okay. As cliche and as horrible as that, just Mm -hmm. horribly boring as that sounds. You just need someone to be like, it's fine. You know what I mean? My sister just said the words, it's fine. And that's all I needed. Yeah. Um, and I truly believe that everything would be fine. And at this stage in my life, everything's pretty fine. Um, I do have a bit of a rocky relationship with, well, I have a non-existent relationship with my dad. I know that he knows. I've seen him. The only time that I've seen my dad in the last three years is when my grandpa passed because uh, it was his dad. Mm. So um, that's the only time I've really seen my dad. Um, we don't really speak. And I have a bit of a rocky relationship with my Nana because she doesn't really accept some things about it. Um, mm. So that's it's it's a part of the territory, unfortunately. Um, and I guess that's just parts where we have a little bit of a difference because you don't necessarily have to worry about the non-acceptant part of a relationship with people around you. And I do. Yeah. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to mention, I talked about, you know, growing up um, and going through some experiences. Now, JPJ, you had experiences like um, first kiss and first crush mm-hmm. and first mm-hmm. relate high school sweetheart and all of that kind of stuff. I didn't get a lot of that because okay. openly at least I didn't get mm. a lot of those experiences. So I've had to, in a lot of ways, grow up really, really fast because I had to learn a lot about myself at a very early age. But also I had to now in this last 18 months had to kind of let, let myself be a little bit immature and experience all these feelings. So we've had to grow up so fast yeah. and then kind of go back in time a little bit because I'm like trying to play catch up. Um, there's mm-hmm. a society pressure. Uh, to be with somebody, to be blah, 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 you know, ABC, all these things. And I've had to play catch up in this last 18 months and try and jam pack a lot of my life that I should have had when I was 16 into mm-hmm. now. Um, and that's been difficult. Um, but that's just more society. There is a society pressure on everything. There's a society pressure to look a certain way, to act a certain way, to be a certain yeah. kind of gay person. I hate that. I hate the stereotype of like, you're gay, so you should do this what? I don't understand that. I don't, uh, I don't give in to stereotypes. I joke about them because they're fucking funny, but I don't give Mm -hmm. in to that. I am Josh Robinson. I'm gay. Yes, but I'm just myself. I'm not, oh, you got to flap your hands and you got to talk like a girl and you got to do this and blah, 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 blah. And oh my God, like you got to, you got to act like why I'm the same person I was before and after there's, there's no difference to me. Like I'm not I wouldn't call myself masculine or feminine. I'm just myself. And I don't understand yeah. why there's like this certain perception of like a gay man has to do this or a, or a, a lesbian woman has to do this or a trans man or a trans woman has to do this or a bisexual person has to do this. Like, I just don't understand that, that stigma against that. I'm just myself. And you take it as you, you know, if some people want to assume that I am gay without knowing me, fine. I don't give two shits. I am gay, but I don't think that should be a part of it. I don't look at someone and assume that they're straight. Like, I just... True. True. You, you guys, yeah. I think the biggest difference is that you don't have to tell people that you are straight. People assume that you are straight. Correct. Yeah. And I, I feel, I, and yeah, I feel like, 
And again, obviously, you know way better than I, but I feel like that's a thing that if you are gay or lesbian or whatever, that becomes part of your not introduction because it shouldn't matter, but like that's part of like, you know, like I don't introduce myself. I don't go, hey, my name's Joe. Nice to meet you. I'm straight. Yeah. Like I don't have to do Society that. Society tells I don't me have... that you're straight and that's what I have. Correct. Because you, because I'm a male. So you just assume that I'm straight because – that's just, oh, you know, society and just not normal, but like society, the way you grow up, most things you see on television, old movies, all this stuff, it tells you that the normal way of life is husband and wife, kid, you know, whatever, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. And like I, I have known gay people that very early on in meeting them, they're very open about telling people mm. that they're gay. Yeah. And I think, that, again, that's part of who they are. I'm glad they're, they feel – that comfortable to be that open about it. But like, I don't have to do that being yeah, a straight don't. person. Like yeah, I don't right. have to tell everyone in the world that, Oh, by the way, just so everyone knows I'm, I'm straight. You I, don't have I, like, to come women. out is what you're saying. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. I would like it to be more of a normal thing. Yeah. Like it you, it's, it's weird. Cause some uh, people only know me. It's weird. Cause it's been so long. Well, not so long. It's been so quick and so long in some ways, but it's been 18 months and some people only know me as being openly out. Like you didn't know me before. So yeah, you no, I know, only know you as, yeah, as who you are. Yeah. You, know? like that's, you didn't know me before. I didn't know pre yeah. coming out I've Josh. only known. Yeah. Yeah. So. It is interesting to think about that's that why, like, like in that yeah. sense. Because. And that's why. I, well, go on. Sorry. I was going to say that's why I asked about the content create, like how that mm. affect, like because the, on, the only Josh I've ever known, come, you know when we even talk off air, like you're a confident gay man person. Yeah. Yeah. You're just a <laughs> confident person in general, yeah. like, you know, gay or whatever, like you're just a confident person. That's the Josh that I've known even before we started doing this or like even first chatted on love wrestling, mm -hmm. like the content I was following you before yeah. all this happened, like the content that I've always seen has always been a confident person doing it. So yeah. that, you know, hearing the stories of how, not confident you were for a long time about this is like, I've never seen that Josh. So yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I know a lot of how... people say that yeah. and I'm like, Oh, well you don't know. There's so much, I think there's so many things that people aren't aware of about me. They just kind of see this one version of me and they just assume, and that's fine because I am that now, but also like I've, I've had my own set. Listen, most funny people, it comes from a, a level of pain or a level of trauma, mm. especially in their childhood. Um, mine comes from the fact that I spent 24 years of not being openly myself. So that's where my kind of humor and self-deprecation and all that comes from. I think every, like, every stand-up comic will tell you that they've had a pretty shitty life and that's why they're funny um, for the most part. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably why people get that kind of perception of I'm so confident and stuff like that is because it comes from a long time of not being confident and being pretty freaking depressed with a lot of things in my life. Um, yeah. I'm not saying that I'm the super happiest person. There's a lot of things in my life that have come directly from coming out that I'm like, Oh, this isn't great. Um, like just the perception of like you come out and instantly you're going to be with somebody and that's the end of it. And it's like, well, no, I've had a very struggling time in the last 18 months of like learning yeah. about, gay hookup culture and learning about men being kind of shitty sometimes. Um, I'm not saying all men, oh, I'm just saying men can be shitty. Um, and just learning about that side of things. And honestly, um, I've learned a lot about women more so than ever before in the last 18 months, because women are more comfortable around me because they don't feel a sexual pressure around me. And I take that as a massive check and a massive win in my column yeah. of like, there's no sexual pressure. Um, from me mm -hmm. to a woman. And sometimes women do like speaking to men that aren't going to fuck them because men can be disgusting yeah. pigs that all they want is they just want yeah. to get, get it in. Um, mm -hmm. And women have spent a long time being objectified and stuff like that. And they just sometimes, I guess, feel less pressure speaking to someone that isn't just another lady and they're speaking to a man, but they know that, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's certainly been a crazy 
time. And I'm very glad. Mm. Uh, look who's here to steal the spotlight, by the way. You can guess who's about to Oh, of course. Uh, yes. Of course. She will, I will say, as, as, come the fuck up. I'm talking about you. Now that I wanted to come up, she's like looking at me like, absolutely fucking. Yeah, no, I don't click. think so, sir. Come on, click. Here she is. All right. So I will say, as much as it's weird and people sometimes don't value cats and they talk about dogs, this little lady, when I, I don't, she didn't know, obviously she's a cat, but that whole hmm. 18 minutes that I recorded that video, she was right, sitting right beside me. She sat at my feet while I recorded that video and whether it's weird or not, or, or whatever it may be, she was right by my side. She was the only one in my house. She was the only one that really yeah. knew everything because I'm a person, cause I live alone. I talk to myself sometimes cause I'm like, well, I just, oh, yeah. And she knew about all this kind of stuff. Whether she didn't understand, she's trying to get down so bad, and I'm just not letting her. Yeah, I'm talking like, about I'm you. Done here. Um, but like she knew this little lady has been with me for everything. So I do appreciate Giddy, even if she is the biggest piece of shit that I know in my entire life. Like, look, no, I, yeah. don't sit right yeah. in the camera. Are you kidding? Yeah, right there. Yeah. Just she's like this. I'm sitting right here, right dead center. Peace. All eyes on me. Look at it. Oh, now she's yeah. Giddy. Side profile. Look at this. <laughs> She should look. I no, wish she turned around and looked right in there. Please don't flash your ass to the camera. I'll probably get demonetized yeah. on YouTube. Yeah, go, go over there. Um, yeah, but I feel the same. I um about cats. Mm, I was going to say. I mm, feel the same. I had, you know, this is a completely different subject, but I had a tough go round for a few months, mm -hmm. and Lou Lou was, was there just for me you. And my my cat Lou. Yeah, it was just me and Louie. We were here, and he is. You he's know, he's still a baby. He's only yeah. he's only a year and a half, so he's still a little guy. But, like, he's not the most affectionate yet because he's still so young and rambunctious and stuff like that. But, like, I felt like even though he's a cat and he's not a dog and things like that where dogs kind of get okay, the Okay, but also cats are more... very loyal animals too. There's oh, yeah, loyalty. and he, he knew he knew I was going through a tough time. He knew, mm -hmm. and, you know, he would sit up on the couch with me. Yeah. Which he, he did never too. did before. Yeah. Or he would come over for some extra pets throughout the day, which he really didn't do before. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of felt like, hey, man, you know I need this. Mm -hmm. Like, you know I need this. You're hooking me up because, like, you know something's off, man. Yeah. Like, I like you're my you're my best bud. I love you. Yeah, I love so, – Giddy's like, my best little girl. You know? She's my she's – my, yeah. she's the only lady I think I'd ever get married to. There you go. Look at that. She, <laughs> um, go. But Gid's birthday is next week. She's going to be eight years old. Oh. She's 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 creeping so up. So not only age. is it a Royal Rumble extravaganza next week, we're going to be celebrating Giddy's birthday. It's actually next Thursday of all days. <laughs> wow. So uh, it's even more perfect. We'll have a Giddy when Zoom party. When this airs, it will be her <laughs> actual birthday. Next week, we celebrated Thursday. celebrated yours. So it will be on the Royal Rumble episode we do next week. It will also be a, a party for – Little gig gig because she's she's yeah. entering senior cat years, guys. She's uh she's officially what, what is that? Eight, eight is the eight, cat eight, game. eight eight is officially considered a senior cat. Okay, because I know they become an adult at one. Yeah, so they're so, only technically considered a kitten for the first year. Then they're an adult right at one. I believe it would be like they're entering their fifties if they were a human at eight. Wow. So yeah, she's she's officially the cats. Some cats last for like I hope 60, they last forever. forever twenty up to twenty years. Yeah. Gid will Some be, Gid will, Gid will yeah, outlive that's me, what hopefully. Be, that's what it's going to be. Loose. But yeah, yeah she was my little, she was my little security blanket, I guess you could say. That whole video, I remember her sitting right at my feet. She didn't jump up. She didn't do anything. Awesome. She just sat at my feet like, I got you. You know what I mean? Where she obviously, mm -hmm. a lot of people will be like, shut the fuck up. But for me, in my brain, <laughs> she knew exactly what was going on. And she knew yeah. that she needed to just be near me. She didn't need to smother me. She just needed to be near me. And she was. And... I mean, for someone who lives alone, that's all I could ask. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so all in all, um, to wrap everything up, first person I told was my sister and my brother-in-law. Uh, my mom was really cool with it. Um, there's some members of my family that maybe aren't so great with it, but still love me. Um, they just can't, mm -hmm. you know, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah. And listen, a lot has happened in my time and I'm not saying it to be like poor me or my experience is worse than ever. I've had it so tough. I'm just saying that's my journey. That's my story. And I just feel like telling people, you never know whether it's five people that listen to this or if it's 500,000, it doesn't matter. It just takes one person to listen to this and go, Hey, maybe I should do this or maybe I should tell somebody mm -hmm. or maybe I should, you know, whatever it may be, maybe it's my time to tell my story, whatever that story may be. 
if I can give you a little bit of confidence or just seeing somebody in the general public that's like open and normal, trying to do his best to normalize what this is. That is my goal. Mm. I could give two shits about yeah. wrestling. I could give two shits about the content I create in the long terms. I love content and don't get me wrong. It's a very important part of my life. But if anything from the time that I'm active in this content world, if they just take away, it's like, that's that gay dude that talked a lot about being gay because he wanted to normalize things. I'm pretty certain I've done my part in content creation, to be completely honest with you. That is my main goal is just to kind of, and especially in wrestling, which is a very toxic world um, that's gotten better, but it also hasn't in a lot of stretches. And while a lot of people say there's so many gay wrestling fans. Yeah. Okay. But there also isn't, there also isn't mm. a lot of us and to separate the two and, and not just think, cause I got a lot of comments about people being like, oh, so you like wrestling cause it's men in short little clothes. No, actually a lot of wrestlers are actually fucking ugly. And also, um, <laughs> I like wrestling cause it's cool. And some wrestlers are hot, yeah. but that just goes with the territory of anything. People are hot. Um, but like, mm -hmm. it's not the reason I watch wrestling. I could give two shits. They could wear trench coats and cover up their whole body. And I'd still like wrestling. It's just a part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just my thing. And I just want to continue to do what I'm doing. Cause I think that it does more good than it does harm. Um, and if I want to talk about Daniel Garcia and how much I love him and one day we're going to get married, <laughs> then I'm going to talk about that because Hey, why is it, a, why is it not okay for me to talk about it? But for Tom down the road to say how much he wants to marry Thunder Rosa, why is, why is that sure. any different? You know what I mean? Like, and is yeah. this a bit of harmless fun at the end of the day? I talk a lot about Eric Bischoff. I don't actually want to fuck Eric oh, Bischoff, gonna... guys. He's 70 years old, but like Wait, for a seven... for you, you don't. Well, for, if I was going to fuck a 70 year old, I guess I'd choose him, but like, I'm not actively pursuing a 70 year old. No, but if he was like, Hey, I mean, and he's rich as fuck too. That's. <laughs> oh yeah. And he seems to have a, he, he seems to have like a good sense of humor. <laughs> He's a yeah. good looking man, good looking individual. And he owned a wrestling company that successfully. I was going to say, like, he, he is, to he is part of wrestling history forever. Forever. Good for you, Eric. Just for the you story. know what? I take that back. Just for the story. I take that back. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Come on, Eric you got Bischoff. him just for the story. What a silver fox. That's a story a you have forever. Hey, you know what? One time me and Bischoff. Damn. What? Yeah. Imagine that That's story, story though. That's me, what I'm saying. a 26 year old man, being like, I remember that night with him. Yeah, this one time, me and Eric, you know, Eric Bischoff? <laughs> well. Be Not like, as much as what me. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah! What? Okay, there's uh, my two goals: to be normalizing uh, uh, just gayness in the world. Yeah, Eric Bischoff, you know, Eric, hit me up. No, not really, mm -hmm. but also like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but anyway, of course, we end about talking about Eric Bischoff, of course. But yes, you know, that's where that's where my mind is at, and I'm glad I could kind of you know, reshare and share some parts that I've never really shared before. And now you kind of know the journey leading up to that for the most part and know where my head's at now. And, and just kind of, yeah, just, I can't, I I've said this many, I said this when I first came out and all of the love that I've got, but I really can't, um, thank everybody enough. Even after all of this time, I still go back and read those comments and I still remember who DM me and I still remember who reached out and, I still remember all of the people just giving me so much love and support and everything over that time. Um, I'll never, ever forget that in my life. It'll just be something that I don't think it will ever go out of my brain and how vividly yeah. I remember it all. Um, I just got a lot of outpour of support and love from content Josh world and from my normal world as well. Um, it was just it's never truly, I don't think I'll ever be able to express my gratitude for that because it was crazy. It was just an insane yeah. time in my life. And the biggest thing that I'll ever do in my life, I don't think I'll ever exceed that um, for many different reasons. Just because I, nothing, I literally believe anybody that came out can really do anything because nothing's scarier <laughs> um, and nothing is more scary than doing that. And I don't feel scared to do a lot of things anymore. I will, I will say that it's like, well, I did this. So, you know, as a very anxious person that I am in general, um, it took away a lot of my anxiety and I don't That's know how to, I don't know how to put it. It just, it did. It took away a lot of my, for me personally, I'm not saying for everybody, but for me personally, it took away a lot of my anxiety. Like I was a person that was anxious to ring up and order a pizza. I was that kind of person, like to get on the phone and do that. Gotcha. Now I'm like, give me the phone. 
You know what I mean? I know that's yeah. a very small, yeah, yeah. minuscule thing, but it is. And it's just like, well, I did that. So, like, I'm not sure about how many people realize, like, getting my mouse over to that post button to click public on that YouTube video. Because once you click public, yeah. there's no... There's no turning back. Well, you can there's delete that. it, but someone had seen it. Well, you know what I mean? Someone's like, seen it, yeah. So it's real to someone, you know? And posting that... I remember just posting the video. Hey, here's something. On Twitter, I posted it. I didn't... I just... I literally just put the caption, please read all of this. Uh, please watch all of this. It's very important. Thank you. And then underneath in the thread, I put, yep, I'm gay, blah, 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 blah. On Facebook, I remember going, I just want to post the video and no one's going to see it and it's going to be amazing. Then I yeah. edited the post and it said, yeah, I'm gay. Um, I want people to know this. Please take the time to watch this video before commenting. Um, mm. And yeah. And then it was just kind of like off to the races. And that was at like 9, 9.36 at night I posted that video. And by 11 p.m. it was like that's when all of the stuff kind of was going on. Stuff, and yeah. yeah. And it was just it was just a crazy, crazy experience that I will truly never forget in my life. But yes, thank you for all the people. I know JPJ, you didn't know me at that stage and you weren't familiar mm -hmm. with who I was. Um, but you could probably imagine the amount of comments. And I had to go to sleep, oh, by the way, by the way. So everyone that was, I was waking say, up. Yeah, it's, it's PM. Like, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so you were, people were waking as up. As you were going to bed for the night, a lot of people were waking up going like, oh my God, this is great. So like, I, I want to send my up. love to Josh. I woke yeah. up to a, like a big string. Plethora of notifications yeah. on my phone. Hey, it, was probably, like, it was probably a good way to wake up, I would guess. The, yeah, the, it was the also a good way. To, I'm, was, I'm sure they were. Uh, for, when it first came out, I didn't get any shitheads. Well, I did get a good, lot of weird good. dudes in my uh, DMs, like, oh, my oh God, like trying to trying to make moves, kind of, like that way. and I'm just like, can you? Oh, it's creepy. Right. Well, it's kind of creepy. Yeah, to be honest. I've seen my TikTok. People know me on TikTok, and <laughs> some of these comments are wild. And I'm like, men are gross. Yeah, I've never met someone yeah, who just instantly gone, yeah. show me your willy. No thanks. Willies are ugly. I, I <laughs> yeah, I um, I've never been the type of person to. Just meet someone and be and be like, hey, here's my willy. So yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I don't know. I don't know how people. Casual hookups are not my thing. No, not for me. Not for me either. Uh, no, thank you. Yeah, I just Nothing don't. Seems I don't more live stressful, in that. To be completely honest. Yeah, I don't live in that mindset. Um, so I don't know what it's like to be one of those people that has. I guess you could call it the confidence. I guess. Or just being a man ho, I, I really. Or just being weird. I, yeah, I don't know, I, like I having that weird. sort of like it's like half confidence, half creepy to the point where you're just like, you know what? I'm not in here. It is. That's not. I'm not. I just don't. It. It's not my thing. In no. fact, if someone did that, I wouldn't care how hot they are. I would be like, I'm yeah, good. Hundred. Yeah, I feel like that would be a turnoff for me. I'd be like, no, I'm good. I'd like to actually know you're a human first mm -hmm. before I uh, we get there. Mm. So mm -hmm. you know, just know that, me that's first. Just me. Then we can get yeah. to that later. I want to um, make sure that like I like being around you before. And then I'm maybe we can correct. Then we can we can get to that level after. But like at first, let's I go need bowling. To know that, like I genuinely let's go don't get a coffee. Kill, like yeah, you know, exactly. I don't want you. I, are you going to put drugs in my food? That's what I want to know about you before. Correct. I do any of that kind of stuff. Or are you like a mean person? Do you yeah. talk crappy to the to the hostess? Yeah. Or the Ooh. server. Because then I know you're a shithead human, and I don't want to be around you. I've had a date like that, you know, like and I, it didn't go well. Oh, immediately. I've had one, too, immediately. she I, I, It was a female, obviously. obviously yeah. But, like, she was uh, immediately rude. Yeah, he was. To the server, and I was like, well, this ain't making it past this. I, uh, so, <laughs> I, it's like, okay. He, it was going well, and then we ordered dessert, and he was like, see you in tea of a person to this waiter. And mm -hmm. I was like, it was like a 17-year-old kid. Yeah. And I'm just like, not is. the person I was dating, like the person I was like the, yeah, like, yeah, like, and, um, yeah. I immediately just changed my demeanor and was like, I'm like, can we yeah. go? And I said, yeah. I, I shook the guy's hand at the end of the date. You can, oh, mm. wow. Mm -hmm. He went to have a hug you and can, I went, and, thank you, sir. And I, you are, you and I are people that work in retail. Yes. Service industry. Yes. So I think we weigh on shit like that yes. more than someone who I am the nicest never. motherfucker to people in 
supermarkets, in a oh, Target, yeah. in any kind of retail yep. setting. I am the nicest person in the world. And I put stuff back if I don't want it anymore. I put it back in the spot that it's meant mm -hmm. to go. I'm like, how are you today? Like, I'm super like, if I ask, excuse me, I'm sorry to bother you, but can you show me where this is? Or can I have this coffee? Or can I have this sandwich? And like, thank you very yep. much. Thank you. You have a lovely, I'm that person when I talk to retail staff. Because I know what it's like on the other side to be harassed and oh, yeah. all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So for me, if if I can tell – and I've been doing it for a long time. I've been in the retail stuff for 18 years. So mm -hmm. I've been doing it for a long time. I can tell everything I need to know about a person mm -hmm. by the way I see them treat people who are serving them mm -hmm. or who are – doing a service for them. Mm -hmm. If you can't be nice to those people who are working their ass off to get you that cup of coffee or show you where the thing is in aisle eight mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. if you can't be nice to those people, 10 to one, you're probably not a nice person. Yep. So I, I, I just don't need to, I don't need to know you. I don't need to be around you because those people are there. <sighs> yes, it's their profession. I get it. But those people are there for you. They're ser they're giving you especially a service in these times to too, make your guys. life early. Yes, I can tell to you to make your life I'm pretty, easier. It's pretty like you know. I can pretty much speak for everybody that I am so thankful that I've had a job during this pandemic. But trust me, 100 I don't want to go to fucking work and get COVID just so you can buy something. I would rather be home, mm -hmm. like you. Yep. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, just be thankful that I'm even at work or any of us are at work at the moment, so you can get what you need to get. And Yes, it's a part of our job, but also I didn't sign on the dotted line thinking that we're going to be in a global pandemic one day and I'm not getting paid any yeah. extra to be here. It is my simple, just right to work just because yeah. you need your stuff. And that's fine. I want to help where I can in this pandemic, but also, especially in these times, it should be any time, but especially in these times, just treat the people that are serving you or that are mm -hmm. working in your supermarkets or whatever it may be to make sure that you can get what you need to get. Just, just chill out. You know what I mean? Just, just be nice yeah, to people. Like in anyone's job description that works in retail, part of the job description does not say that being berated or treated like you're less than it, that's not part of our job description. Yeah. Our, so agreed. again, it's just one of those things where it's like, it shouldn't, I mean, it shouldn't be hard to be nice in general, No. but especially when you're in that, like, you know, like, and most, you know, it's just, yeah, you can just tell a lot about the, the type of people that they are when you see people treating people the wrong way and that type of thing. Like one, to me, it's just 1, like, percent. all right, well, you're a shit, you're a shit human. So let's move on. 1000%. Like, I agree. On. I agree yeah. wholeheartedly. Um, but you know, whatever, um, we'll kind of wrap <laughs> things up here. All in all, I'm gay. I'm doing very well. I'm glad to have this experience. There's been a lot of shit that's happened but I'm happy to be on the other side of it and continue moving on with my life. So that's where we'll end it. Um, we are so, so, so excited. We've been talking about doing next week's show. I feel like for the last three fucking months, it is Royal Rumble time. Ooh, I'm ready. I, am, I ready. am so ready to do next week's show. Next week is not going to be heavy. We're not going to be talking about any of that stuff. It is all things Royal Rumble. We're going to be talking Royal Rumble predictions for this year's Royal Rumble event. Our final, final picks for saying, hey, this is who's going to win the men's and women's Royal Rumbles. We're not going to change anything. We're not going to do anything. We're going to talk about all the matches on the very stacked at this stage, time of recording before Raw mm. um, this week. Yeah. Time of recording card. It's going to be huge. It's a big event. We're going to have, what, 50,000 people or something at in St. Louis? I believe so. Um, yep. It's going to be a big, huge event. It is Royal Rumble time. We're going to be talking favorite Royal Rumbles. I'm starting now, as of yesterday, going back and watching some old Rumbles and getting in that Rumble yeah, zone. I, I've been doing it since I about am, middle last week. I sent, yeah, I'm, I'm in pump, it. I'm in the zone. I'm ready. We're talking Rumble moments. We're going to be talking so much. Everything Royal Rumble related is going to be next week's show. It is really going to be a Royal Rumble extravaganza, as you said at the beginning of the show. It is going to be a really fun, fun show. Like, I'm genuinely pumped to do next week's yeah. show. Um, maybe we'll do a little, like, uh, you know, maybe we could do a random number or something and be like, this is the number that I got. Will this person win or something well, like I, that? I, I know I, I reached out. So I used to do a pool with my friends where obviously I want to go through our picks of all the matches yeah. and things like that. But for the Royal rumble matches in general, I used to do like a pool where we would pick, you know, 
who's going to win? Who's going to be the runner up? Who are the final four? Who's, who's going to be the number one yeah. entry? Who's going to be number 30? And you get like 10 or 12. Also, mini, who's going to have the most man, eliminations? WWE, time. If you're listening to this show, don't fucking tell us who number one, number two, number 30 is. Yes, let us just don't, be surprised. They've been, doing, they've been doing that the last few years and it's been Fuck pissing off. me off. Just let us, I would, I would honestly, I'm not even kidding when I say this. I wish we would know none of the participants going into the rumble. Yeah. People 100%. just say, I might I think... be in the rumble. Can I be in the rumble? Like we don't know. And then they just come out and you're like genuinely just surprised. It pissed me off mm -hmm. when they announced all the women. Yes. I'm very excited. And I understand building buzz. Trust me. I get it. But you can build the Royal rumble on just the fact that there's 30 women and that there's 30 men. We don't need to yeah. let us believe in Santa Claus. You know what I mean? We don't want to know <laughs> that Santa isn't what Santa says. You know what I mean? Like, let us just believe and have some gen. We want to feel like a kid when we watch wrestling and rumbles probably the only time where I generally watch wrestling every year when I, when I feel like a child, because I'm just so into it. I stand yeah. up and watch the rumble and I'm like, Oh my fucking God. Like, here we go. It's rumble time guys. Like it's the Royal oh, yeah. rumble. Like I just want to feel like that. And, um, sometimes WWE suck the fun out of stuff very easily. So don't tell us who number one is. Don't tell us who number two is. Don't tell us who number 15 is. Don't tell us who number 30 is. Just let us just be like, I love that. You know that moment when they say, and now it is time for the 30 person Royal Rumble match. And then the yeah, kind of silent. Who drew number one. And it's just like. And everyone's like, oh shit, and they, who is it? They, they wait for the music and you're just like, yeah. who is it going to be? Like, is it going to yeah, be? Yeah, who's number one? I remember, yeah. I, I know I gave this to you, and this is a little teaser for next week, but I gave this to you, uh, JPJ, Royal Rumble 2008 in MSG, the really small arena, and they're like, number one, and number one was The Undertaker. Yeah. And number, and two, number two was Shawn, Shawn Michael. Michaels, the two people that ended it the Rumble amazing. last year. But that story yeah. going up to WrestleMania 25, they led into that with so many things over the years. But like, mm -hmm. JPJ... The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels are arguably the two greatest performers of all time. You could make an argument mm -hmm. that they're the two, the two greatest. They started a Royal Rumble match, and we didn't know yeah. that they were going to start. Like, nope. this genuine surprise of being like, Taker and Michaels? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. It's the awesome. two biggest stars yeah, I ever. I love that stuff. Like, I want that this year. I want to be, like, waiting, and then the first person is AJ Styles, or the first person is Bianca Belair, or the first person is whoever. Like... Yeah. That's cool to me. Don't tell me. I don't yeah. want to know. I like the surprise of like the yeah. countdown and being like, who's next? You know what I mean? Like that's exciting. Yeah. And, and you it, can do that. Like they're both, they're both injured right now currently. So I know one of them as in Sasha Banks is definitely not going to be in the Royal Rumble, which is sad. Um, but there's rumor that Bailey might be returning. Um, but like, do you know how me. cool? You're forgetting Oscar. Everyone's forgetting Oscar. Well, no, Oscar too. But like, when you're talking about a, a moment like Taker and Michaels, like if they were both healthy, oh, do you imagine. know how cool of a moment yeah. it would be if like the first two were Bailey and Sasha That'd and it was awesome. just them two in the ring and everyone's like, oh man, like you remember the tag team, you remember the Brooklyn takeover, you're like, man, this is just so dope, Bailey and Sasha, like things like that, like it's much better when it's organic instead of like, oh, you lost a match so we know who number one is, it's just like, oh, okay, like. Just surprise me a little bit. Yeah. Just surprise me. I know. Bit. That's it. I, I want like it to. to. Be surprised. I, I want yeah. it to. Trust but me. But anyway, we'll save all that. We, we got a lot to week. talk about next week. It's going to be a really fun show. Um, So have a good Thursday, everybody. We wish you all the best. I will say that by the time uh, this episode airs, you'll know more. But from this episode airing, uh, we are like four days out. From the return of the legacy of, you know that I now have an editor with a person who used to work for what culture, by the way, if you don't know who Sam is, mm. go and follow him, Sam at Sam, the VA mod. Um, you can go do that at this time. Um, you will actually know that I now have physical art drawn for the legacy of by my sister, who is a very, very talented drawer. Um, you will know the Brit Baker, uh, artwork will be out. She drew it herself. That's going to be all artwork for the legacy of going forward is hand drawn. So I have an artist, I have an editor, I have myself and I have love wrestling to back me. Um, I've been telling people for a long time that this return is going to be just not the same as before. This is what I mean. This is going to become a polished piece of work. It's not just a piece of content. This is a piece of work that I'm going to let live on forever. And I truly, truly believe that this can grow and be big if we let it be. And if I put enough effort into it, um, and I'm pretty certain that I'm pretty confident that the work is going to speak for itself. Trust me. 
when I say that because it is not the same piece of content as before and it's all for the better. Um, so 8 a.m. Monday morning, my time. So for a lot of you guys in the States, it'll drop around 5.30, 5 p.m., 4.30, something like that, Eastern time in the States on Sunday night. So you ever watch it on Sunday night, your time. But Monday morning, my time, 8 a.m. Australian Central Daylight Saving Time is when the season two begins of the legacy of we're doing Dr. Britt Baker DMD and we're talking all things Britt Baker in this new look legacy of. Um, and yeah, I've never, ever overstated something so much in my life and overhyped something so much in my life because I am genuinely, genuinely saying that this is the best piece of content I've ever created. These new look legacy ofs are the best things that I've ever created in my life. And I am so ready. I am so ready for you guys to see it. So legacy of it's coming back Monday morning and every Monday um, after for the time being for season two. So I'm very ready for it. I don't mean to overhype anything in my life, but no, I'm ready. No, it's okay. I, I love that series. So I'm very excited to see it come back in its new polished iteration. Yeah. So I'm very excited. It's, it's very, re very ready. So go and watch that. Follow Love Wrestling at Love Wrestling CA. Pretty much, is that pretty much confidently everywhere? Love Wrestling CA everywhere? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Go and follow them on your favorite platform and stuff like that because we're doing big things. We'll have more stuff to talk about, yes, I are. believe, by the time... The Rumble episode is out. I believe we'll have even mm -hmm. more stuff to talk about uh, for Love Wrestling and for other things. Um, but yeah, other than that, watch Between Two Beards. Um, do all the stuff. Watch yeah, the Weekend Elite Report. Tonight, that's coming. That's kind of back, isn't it? Yep. And then this week, well, by the time this airs, on Sunday, the 23rd, GCW is having a very big event at the Hammerstein Ballroom Sunday night. And me and our buddy Lawrence from Love Wrestling will be doing our first ever Love Wrestling GCW reacts Ooh. to that. So you'll get whole whole heaps of me over at Love Wrestling this weekend. So give us a follow. Between Two Beards, we had Alicia Atut on last week. Mm. That was a lot of fun. So go watch that episode. That was one of the funner episodes we've done. We also had an appearance by MLW's open weight champion, Alex Kane, on that episode as well. So... Doing big things over at Love Wrestling, like you said, and I feel like this year is going to be a real big one for us over there. So go give us some love. But then you'll see us next week for our Royal Rumble extravaganza. Which we're ready for. So go do that. We yes. love you very much, and we'll see you next Thursday on the J&J &J Power Hour. Peace out, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>